praise the Lord, everybody. So right now, I'm on my way home from work. I know it's a little dark. Excuse me. I need to get some more um, batteries for my um, some more batteries for my ring light. You know, the one that I take with me. So anyway, I just wanted to come to you guys with the word of the Lord uh, that came to me um, during the Thanksgiving holiday. Now, um, there are times when um, me and my mother, we go back and forth, but it's not really a fussing type of thing. It's just more like a, um, you know, just a plan type of thing that we do. So she asked me to come downstairs and um, finish cleaning up after we ate breakfast. And, you know, I'm, I'm like, why you can't do it? You know, jokingly going back and forth with her or whatever. She was like, I don't, you know, I don't want to hear that. Come down the steps, you know, just how we go back and forth, whatever. So, um, after we, uh, did the little bit, I was sweeping up, um, you know, the floor or whatever. And then, bam, the parable from the Bible pops up in my head, uh, about, uh, the father who had told two of his children to go um, do something. And one of the children told him, you know, no, I don't want to do it or whatever, but then ended up doing it. And then the other one said, yes, that he would do it. And then he didn't do it. And then the question was asked, who was obedient? The one who said that it that they were going to do it and didn't do it but or the one who um said no and ended up doing it so of course the answer is the one who said no and ended up doing it and then the spirit of the lord had said um right after i had that thought was that the true christian is not the one who gets everything right but the one who is obedient whether they like it or not and that just I know that's not, you know, a real fantastic out of this world word that you never heard before, but it's just something that I feel like we overlook a lot of times because I what I see is I see a lot of people that points the finger, especially, you know, people that's not um living right there themselves, they want to point out and say, "Oh, um you're not christian because you be cussing oh you're not christian because you've been drinking wine oh you're not christian because you're not doing this right and you're not doing that right when god has said obedience is better than sacrifice in the bible you know a person can be living their life and um you know trying to follow every rule in the in the bible and you know stick to the t and they still can miss the mark they still can miss what God is saying. God wants you to be obedient. It's not so much as trying to follow, follow every rule to the T. It's following the guidance of the Holy Spirit. If you mess up, the Holy Spirit convicts you, you repent, and you, you know, you get yourself together. But I just want to speak to those who feel like, you know, um, they've been getting their self right or whatever, and they've been doing good, and they might have had a mishap here or there. And, you know, you feeling like you can't do it or you just feeling um, discouraged right now. I want to encourage you that God is looking for the person who's going to obey him, whether they like it or not. You know, obey him, whether they like it or not, because the one who might be looking like they doing everything right or might be looking like they following the Lord might not be, you know, might not be obedient when when it's things that they don't like because it's easy to be obedient when the thing looks like it's good for you you know it's easier to be obedient when you feel like you about to get a blessing or you know whatever but it's not easy to be obedient when you know um it don't look right just look at just um just look at abraham when he had when he had to um sacrifice isaac to the lord his only son that he had to wait like 25 years to get you know, and then he finally get the, his son and then they happy. And the Lord told him, like, now sacrifice your son to me. And you waited all this time to get, get your son. But 
Abraham was obedient to that. And we and we talk about these these um, stories and and preach these things in sermons. But I really don't think that we get it. I really don't think that we get it. Well, you you know, we need to ask ourselves if God asks us to sacrifice our only child, you know, to him, would we do it? If God asks us to take all of our rent money and give it to somebody who's in need, would we do it? If God asks us to um to give our car away to somebody who really needed it, it would will we obey? Will we obey? And that's that's the thing that blocks our blessings, right? It's the money test. It's those tests where God asks you to let go of something and you trying to hold on to it. It's those things. It's those times where you say, well, I got to hold this back for me and my family or whatever. I can't give this away because then what I'm going to have, you know, it's those times where God is looking for you to be obedient. And the only way that he can use you in a greater way is when you when you are obedient in those times, because he cannot give you the power to raise the dead. He cannot give you the power to do certain things if you're not willing to give up some things. You know, because we are told in, um, you know, in religious settings that, oh, Jesus paid it all and grace, grace, grace and all of this stuff. But in all reality, it's a price. Jesus said. Jesus said, whoever um, shall um, save his life will lose it. And whoever will lose his life for my sake will, will gain it. That means you got to give up something. If you ready to lose your life for the sake of Jesus Christ, then you've given up something. you got to pay something. Don't ever believe somebody when they're telling you, oh, Jesus paid it all, and you ain't got to do nothing, and, and, and grace, 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 and, you know, you just got to live your life. Because that's, that's, that's nonsense. That's nonsense. That's living lukewarm. And God would rather you be hot or cold. He said the lukewarm, he would spit out of his mouth. We overlook the scriptures in the Bible that we don't like. We only want to talk about the prosperity. We only want to talk about those um, those nice scriptures. But we don't want to talk about, about the fact that you got to be obedient whether you like it or not. If God asks you to, to mortgage up your house to, to give to so and to somebody's ministry, guess what? That's what he is expecting you to do. But we so scared to do it because we think we we just gonna end up with the raw end of the stick. If you are willing to do that, then you will. Then Jesus promised you that you will gain your life. He's not gonna just let you be out here broke and and you done gave up all your money to help somebody else. Why are we Why are we walking around and preaching to everybody? Oh, that Jesus is the way maker and a miracle worker, but we don't want to trust him when it comes to our stuff. It's funny. Like, look. It's funny, right? I was looking I was looking on YouTube, you know, listening to my um, you know, my stuff on YouTube or whatever. And it was a commercial that came past. And the commercial was this um it, it was this this other guy's um this other YouTuber's channel where he was calling different churches and asking them could they take in um refugee children into their church and house these children. Every last church this man called they told him that they could not do it. And, you know, he was asking them, like, well, can you take them into your house personally or whatever? And every one of them said no. Every one of them said no. It got to the point where though he was still talking and they hung the phone up on him. But this is this is the, this is the thing we do. We we um we talk a big game. We talk a big game. But when it, God comes to put us on the spot, even though he was lying about the refugee children, just, just imagine if they had children that needed a place to stay. Them children would not get no, no help from the church at all. All them church people hung the phone up on him. And these were places that were known for taking in children. And helping children. But they talking about no, they don't have no space. And no, they can't do this. And no, they can't do that. And, and I just feel like this is, this is a reality. We live in this type of religious culture where... We talk like we we love our neighbors and we love ourselves, but we we don't we don't do it. We don't do it. Half of us don't even tithe, and we come to church every every Sunday. You know, be blessed, be encouraged in Jesus' name. I just wanted to encourage encourage somebody. Bye bye.